हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल प्लीज लेट मी नो इफ आई एम विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल टू यू इन द कमेंट्स Please let me know if I'm visible and audible. We'll wait for uh, some time for people to join in. Okay, then we can begin with our presentation. I hope you all are in good health during this times, and thank you so much for coming out here to listen to me today. I would like to congratulate Snehal Alita Kala Kendra and specially Snehal. Nath Festival is taking great initiative for the awareness of Indian classical dance forms. The purpose of these dance forms was to express the pure and unconditional devotion towards gods of the Hindu mythology to establish a direct connection. between the devotee and deity through these dance forms so i request all the viewers and artists practice and preserve great treasure this is our great treasure thank you now i would like shrita to be continue thank you mama uh, first of all a very good evening to one and all i am shrita ambekar of guru gayatri ambikar and uh, we'll be starting with today's presentation with the amba stuti so Vaani sakani, 
originating from the state of Andhra Pradesh. It originally gets its name from the village of Kuchipuri, which is in the Krishna district of Andhra Pradesh, 32 miles from Vijayawada and 15 miles from Majhli Patna. In the ancient times, Kuchipuri was known as Kuchelapuri or Kusilabapuri. The word Kusilaba means a traveling dramatic troupe. So it meant that the Kuchipuri village was an adobe for the traveling dancers in those times. To sum up what exactly Kuchipuri dance form is, in a very few words, it could be said that it is an amalgamation of quick footwork, dramatic characterization, spirited narrative, expressive art eye movements which are bold and sensuous, and a beautiful blend of Tandav and Lasya. In those ancient times, this art form was only uh, allowed to be learned by the male population, the male members of the society. So you see that the Tandav is very aggressive in this dance form as well as the last year which is exaggerated because it was the males who performed it. And so it can be seen that Kuchipudi is such a beautiful dance form. We'll, bring in, we'll begin our presentation today with a Ganpati Kautam which I would like to present. Ganpati Kautam, Natra, Tal, Adi. This time the best that do. This time the best that do. This time the best that do. Then that said, then that said. dancers 
have presented and portrayed through their dance form in front of the great kings of those times. The issues and the problems of the poor and the underprivileged in the society through their dance and they have been appreciated and awarded for their efforts. When you consider Kuchipudi dance form, it has had a lot of contributors for how it is existing today and how it has developed through time or how it came into being as well. To name a few, we have the great contributors of Kshetraya with his Padams. Then we have Tyagaraja with his Kirtanas, Annamacharya with his Kirtanas. Then we also have uh, Narayan Tirtha with his Krishna Lila Tarangini. Among them is Chinta Lakshmi Narayan Shastriji, who has a very significant contribution to this dance form. Here, that this dance form was only practiced and allowed to be performed by the main members of society. Chinta Lakshmi Narayan Shastriji took up the initiative to teach this art form to the females. And this led to a great extent of propagation and prosperity to this dance form. Among these names is another important name, Saint Siddhendra Yogi. He is considered as the father of Kuchipudi dance. Why do you say so? I would like to tell you a small interesting story about how this came into being. There was a young orphan boy named as Siddhappa who used to roam from village to village for his livelihood. And with time, he got married to a baby girl in the village of Kuchipudi. He was fascinated by the dancers and the dances and the general art form this village brought. After completing his education, Siddhappa was returning to the village of Kuchipudi. And for doing so, he had to cross a river. And he was swimming through the river and he was almost in the center of it. And he suddenly realized that the waves of the, the current of the river has gone haywire and the waves are coming ferociously at him. It was impossible for him to swim to either side of the banks to save himself. That's when he prayed to the Lord, saying, if ever I get alive out of the situation, I promise that I'll devote my entire life for religious affairs. And Siddhappa was saved that day. He survived that instant and he safely reached Kushipu village. That's when, staying true to his words, he took up the great initiative of developing teaching and propagating this art form of Kuchipudi, where he taught this art form to the young budding male uh, Brahmin boys of the village. That's when he also got the name Saint Siddhendra Yogi. Saint Siddhendra Yogi's contribution to this dance form are very vast, but uh, just to name a few, I would like to say that he was the one who persuaded the then Mughal king, Abdul Hasan Tanisha, to gift away this land of Kuchipudi to the Brahmin families who practiced this dance form. Among his other contributions, there is a very significant one, that is he composed the very famous Parijata Paharan, a dance drama. The speciality of this is that the dance dramas of Kuchipudi have uh, imbibed their features or are based on the Yakshagana traditions. But Saint Siddhendra Yogi modified it in such a way, adding classical elements to it, such as Shabdams and so on and so forth, and made it so that it was abiding to the rules of Bharata's Natya Shastra. And he also persuaded the uh, families of Kuchipudra that each male member of the family has to practice this art form and play the role of Satya Bhama, who is the main protagonist of the Parishata Paharan play, at least once in their lifetime. Now, as we are speaking about Parishata Paharan, which is also known as Bhama Kalapam, this is a very elaborate play and it revolves around the theme of the intense love of Satya Bhama towards Lord Krishna. Now, Satya Bhama, being the Swadhina Patika Naika, she has a command over Lord Krishna. She takes her liberties with him. This play is full of bhava and rasa. And in this you also vividly see the depictions of Satya Bhama's viraha on separation with Lord Krishna, where she eagerly waits to meet him and to be united again. The philosophical theme behind it is 
It's the desire of the Jeevatma to merge with the Paramatma. Even in the Vipralamba Shringara that is portrayed in this dance drama, it symbolizes the efforts and the struggles of the Jeevatma in his attempt to reach the Paramatma. I would like to present a small piece uh, from this dance drama. Uh, before that, I would say that Bhama Kalapam is a dance drama which was so elaborate that in those days, it used to go on for three whole days. But uh, obviously with time, it has changed now. And this, the features and the specificities and the nuances of the dance form still remain, which is the essence of it. So I would like to present a small piece called Pravesha Darvu of this dance drama. Pravesha Darvu is a part of this dance drama where the character introduces itself for the first time in front of the audience, symbolizing its personality, its role in the play. So I'll be presenting Pravesha Darvu of Satya Bhama. Pravesha Darvu, Rag Mukhari, Tal, Mishra Chapu.
symbolism of that of a universe. So we start with the head ornaments. You see there is Surya to the right, there is Chandra to the left. Then you have Papada Bhattu and Papada Bindaninu, which are representative of the nature. Then you have a lot of uh, flower dec uh, decorations over your head. And then you come to the Jara, that is the braid, which is uh, decorated with pieces of jewelry, which are supposed to be symbolic of the Indian astronomy. Then towards the end, you have uh, ornament pieces, which are representative of the Tribhuvana, that is the three worlds of heaven, earth and hell. Apart from this, a Kuchipudi dancer also wears gungus, which accompany in the uh, in emphasizing the footwork and the music that a dancer plays. And to add on to this, we also have makeup in the ahari of Kuchipudi. Moving on uh, to how a Kuchipudi dance is presented. We have, like how it's uh, being presented since the beginning is that the, at the start we have an elaborate piece of Carnatic music which is accompanied by various instruments such as Mridangam, flute, violin, Natvangam and so on and so forth. In this music, during this music, the stage is sprinkled with holy water. It's something called as Mancha Shuddhi Karan and also decorated with flowers to make it more presentable for the performance. There is a Ambastuti, which we started our presentation with today, and later to that is a Ganesh Vandana or a Ganpati Kauta, which are also presented today. So, this is a sequence after which there can be an initiation of the dance drama or any of the Kuchipudi dance items. As far as the dance dramas are concerned, we have spoken a bit about uh, the Parijatapah and Bhama Kalapam dance drama, which is one of the famous ones. Apart from that, we also have Golla Kalapam, Dadi Namma Kalapam, which are another uh, various dance dramas which are uh, beautifully choreographed in this dance. To specify, Kuchipudi is a beautiful blend, has a beautiful blend of Natya Dharmi and Loka Dharmi. And for the special feature dance uh, items of Kuchipudi, we have the Shabdams, which are elaborate pieces of music uh, portraying the mythological stories such as Dashavda Shabdam, Krishna Shabdam, Ramayana Shabdam and many more. Apart from this, we have Ashtapadis of Jayadevas. Jayadeva has written a beautiful compositions of Geet Govindas, which are amazingly choreographed in this uh, dance form through Ashtapadis. Then we have Anamachari Kirtanas, Tyagraj Kirtanas, we have Varnams, Padams, Javanis, Tillanas and all of this are very essentially uh, portraying the Nritta, Natya and Dritya in this dance form. Today, in front of you, I would like to present just the glimpses of one of the Shabdams, Dashavta Shabdam. Dashavta Shabdam, Rag Mohana, Tal, Tishra Triputa. Thank you. 
make sure that anybody of you who have any queries, doubts regarding or if you want to learn and know more about this, always feel free to come to me or my mother and we'll be happy to guide you through it. Uh, I would like to end the session on a thought that each classical dance form is filled with thousands and thousands of philosophical and spiritual understanding and learnings which are meant to be explored. It's not just dance but it's a way of life and I just aspire that each one of us gets to experience it in our lifetime. So a uh, uh, very thank you to all of you who came today to watch me live on Facebook for having the patience to hear me out. Uh, thanks to Sneha Lalit Kala Kendra for giving me this opportunity for presenting. And also a special mention uh, to my friend and the Sherke family for giving me this place to perform here today. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening.